What's up guys, Games here and welcome back to Pro Cycling Mode 2021 for the very beginning of our career mode this season. Starting it quite late, usually I start in June when, when I'm in the middle of February. Um, but obviously I had my Pro Cyclist and I figured that this is a good period. We have finally cycling back on our roads and I feel like today is the day to start a career mode, I'm unbelievably excited and I hope you guys are as well. Because the team we have decided to pick for this career mode is none other than Intermarché ou Anti Gobert, promoted in World Tour two years ago now, and one of the favorite team from, uh, well, I guess basically everyone, with the performances of Taco Van der Horn and Rein Tarame, most notably on the Grand Tours last season. They're a very interesting team, uh, probably the worst team on the World Tour this season. And I think that's also why I've decided to pick them, because they could be quite interesting. Uh, but we're going to go through very quickly through the lineup. Obviously, our main man is going to be none other than Alexander Kristoff. Um, the 34-year-old Norwegian will be trying to um, win maybe maybe a, um, a Flanders Classic with him and perform on the Tour de France. Quinton Hammonds, the 26-year-old puncher, will be there for the Ardennes. Yannet and Louis Mentiès, our two mountain leaders, will both go to the Vuelta, I believe. Dimitri Kles and Mederent are there for the Cobbles as well. Lorenzo Rota for the Giro, Taco Van der Horn. And then uh, we can carry on to the lineup with some decent young prospects as well, mainly Biniam Germay, already winner in real life in um, the Spanish race early season. He's there in the team alongside Gerbert Tyson and Laurent Hus. Um, Georg Zimmermann also is here. We have the likes of Julius Johansson for the young riders. I think it's an, it's an interesting team. Um, there's no top tier rider. It's average, and yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can have some fun. I thought about maybe doing a bit of a of a montage, kind of a kind of like what Joe did with with uh, with Uno X, but I figured that's his area of expertise, my expertise, and where I excel. Is winning races now i'm not gonna have uh, every single detail for the planner but as you can see i have made the planner for literally everyone and every rider in the team it's taken me a long long time but i believe we should be good uh with that yeah i did a tour pollen as well uh this took me about one hour and a half um we don't really have a lot of riders in the team which is something i've noticed um meaning that we have some riders that will end up with around 80 days i don't think i've pushed towards 80 I think Max is 79, yeah, Max is 79 with uh, Christoph and Jan Hert, but quite a lot of race days, so I feel like the end of season will be quite difficult for us. If we take a look at our objective, um, most of the objectives are in the uh, World Tour, with the top 5 on the Omlop, top 10 on the Strade Bianca, top 5 in Tireno, uh, top 10 in Milan Sonoma, which isn't exactly a big objective. We do have a top 3 though on the E3 Saxoban Classic, which is 4 stars, so we'll have to do, perform very well there. Uh, sorry, top 5 on both Gonvel Game and Tart of Landeren. Top 10 on the Ronde, which I'm already scared about. Uh, we have to win Shell the Price. We have to do a top 10 on Amstel, Parouet, and La Flèche Wallonne, which is our biggest objective of the season with another 4 star. Win a stage on both the Giro and the Tour de France. And finally, a top 5 on the Tour of Benelux, uh, or Bing Bong Tour. If I'm honest, I don't think we're going to achieve all of them. Uh, I'd be quite surprised if we were to do so. Regarding our difficulty, we shall be playing in a very, very hard, which is my custom difficulty. It's around 1.7, it's 1.175, I think, or 1.2. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be quite tough, but I think it's going to be fun. Finally, before we actually get started, uh, we have some RNG, uh, our wheels and frames. Uh, who could we go for? Uh, mediocre, very bad. Mediocre, very bad. We've got a bad, bad. We'll go for an advanced R50. I don't think, I don't really know if that makes that much difference, if I'm honest. Uh, we only have two frames. Okay, we'll try and uh, probably switch provider for next season. Um, but let's go. And our season begins here in Australia for the tour down under. We do have the Tropical Amisa Bongo in the background. Um, I will have all of the races uh, that aren't important. Being at the end, uh, post commentary, with no face cam, just pure vibes and highlights only, kind of like GCN. Um, but yeah, all of the important races, uh, mainly the water ones, and if there's an important like objective, like the sell the price, it shall be uh, on face cam. Uh, 
Uh, but the lineup we decided to bring here in Australia on the other side of the world Georg Zimmerman, Hugo Page, Barnabé Peak, Lorenzo Rota, Simone Petit, Tom Delacroix, and finally Lorenz Hus. Not really strong um, on the sprinting aspect. We'll have Lorenzo Rota, uh, who will be both our sprinter and actually our GC leader, uh, because it will be obviously aiming to win the uh, Down Under with the um, with Intermarché. We'll have some tough competition though, as Alaphilippe, uh, Roglic, Vingegaard, Van Aert, Thibaut Pinot, Henrik Maas, Mark Woods and the likes of Adam Yates are there. But it's early season and Lorenzo Rota is already uh, with good fitness. I decided to put high fitness on the, some of my riders, um, especially those going to Australia, to uh, try and capitalize on that because we are quite a weak team and relegation into Continental Pro is well within the reach. We've reached the final five kilometers. We just came back on the last uh, attackers of the day, I believe. Um, that there was no one really important. I think Simone Velasco was like the main main rider. Uh, we're obviously going to try and sprint as Jai Hindley and Ivan Sosa crashed right now before the, the, the three kilometers as well. So they're done. That's a big L. That is a big, big L for, um, for the, the leader of Boransgrohe. And I mean, fair, Ivan Sosa will not do well on those roads because there are flat portions. Uh, but we can't really care too much. It is going to be a win for Nasser Boigny. No, he's going to ju get jumped on the line by Rudy Selig. Rudy Selig is the first winner in Walter this season. He wins ahead of Nasser Boigny, Fernando Gaviria. We're coming in P5 with Bernard Lashberg and in P7 with Lorenzo Rota. But the main thing to know, we've lost one GC contender in Jai Hindley. Heading to the second stage of this uh, tour uh, of Australia or Santos Tour Down Under. Um, we are not having a good day with anyone in the team today except Simone Petit. Um, this is considered a sprint stage, but usually it's a good puncher that wins, uh, and so I would have liked to have um, Lorenzo with a better race day condition today, rather than the plus three. Uh, but we'll have to make it work. We've entered the final 10 kilometers of this stage between Unley and Sterling. Uh, yep, the classic stage of the Tour d'Alanda. My frame rate is absolutely shocking, and I'd like to apologize on behalf of uh, me. But we'll have to make it work. Um, as I said at the beginning, we've got two false flats, um, considered a sprint stage, but it is likely that uh, you get a few attacks, or at least that some of the um, potential favorites for this Tour Down Under try to make a move. Uh, I'm going to get Barnabas back a bit up the road. Um, he's my best sprinter today, tied with Lorenzo Rota. So I think that's quite important to have him uh, in the mix. 5k, no attacks so far. I reckon that because the game classifies this as a flat stage, we may not see any moves. And as I say that, we've got the, tra the, the train of Arca Samzik going on the left with uh, the likes of Alain Rio and Matisse Nouvel. Again, frame rate shocking. Wow. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get Lorenzo Rota behind Bernabe H. Peac. Uh, Peac behind Simone Petit. Petit can go 99. All right, here we go. Come on. 2.5k. Leading the peloton is Mike Tennyson. Mike Tennyson has actually left. Wout van Aert has forgotten the wheel of his, uh, of his sprinter, or teammate, I guess, I don't know. Barnabas goes now. There goes Lorenzo Rota. We will see gaps. We will see gaps in this stage, unless, unless Rudy Garcelli or Caleb Ewan. Nope. It's a win for Lorenzo Rota. Three frames per second. But at least it's a win. But frame rate, Jesus Lord, do something. Difficult stage today on uh, the Santos Tour Down Under with uh, the climb um, towards Paracum, I think. Yep, between Norwood and, uh, and Paracum. The Torrance Hill Road, 13%, max gradient, an average of 6.4 for 2 km, um, with a flat portion towards the end, if my memory is correct. Yet another negative day for Lorenzo Rota, though. Um, I, I mean, if you're picking your day, then, then you. You better pick the down the 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 willing gale and you better have a plus five there, Lorenzo. All right, hopefully the FPS won't be as uh, tragic as they were in the previous stage, but we are reaching the final hill, the Torrance Hill Road, as I've said. Um, nope, the FPS are dying. Lovely. Don't understand why. I just, I, I genuinely do not. Uh, but we've got Rota protected by Georg Zimmerman and we've got Simone Petit being protected by Tom Delacroix. Actually, we're gonna switch because Tom will die eventually. Three K to go. The hill should be right around the corner now, and we're going to increase the rhythm. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of attacks. I'm expecting a lot of riders trying to make some sudden moves. Um, where's Petit? Petit is on the right-hand side. 
Here's Jack Egg, Michael Woods are going for movies. That makes sense. That would be quite logical, actually. Um, we are definitely not going to do well today. That is, uh, that is something that has to be said. The win is well and truly out of the equation. It's going to be a W for Jack Egg. The man from here wins ahead of Jonas Vingegaard, Primo Roglic, Roman Bardet, and Rigoberto Urán. There may be a gap here with the group Michael Woods, Rota, and Petit who come up in the top 10. Okay, could have been worse. Um, not a finish I like. And also, I'm, I say it's an excuse, but the FPS really, really pisses me off from playing here. Yet another minus three for Lorenzo Rota. I'm going to start thinking that this man uh, just doesn't want to be in uh, good shape. However, was I'm third of the GC with Lorenzo? How's that happened then? What? How? I oh, true, I did win a stage with him. Yeah, that, that's, I forgot about that. Good, love that. 5k remaining in this stage. Um, I've really been trying to get my train going, but every time I do something, it gets blocked. So, yeah, it's not fun. Nevertheless, we're going to try and push for a, a potential win here. I think Barnabas back might be my best shot because... Actually, no, Lorenzo is there. Lorenzo is there. I didn't think he was um, such well-placed. Caleb Yuendo is gone. <laughs> uh, congratulations to him. Actually, Barnabas. Barnabas is not going to do well. It won't be a win for him. Uh, actually, forget what I just said. It's a win for Barnabas Piak ahead of Kies and Lorenzo Rota. Well, Ka uh, Caleb, what the f... Don't understand this. But we'll take it. It's a second win on this down under. He did choose his day. He did choose his day. Lorenzo Rota with a plus three today. Okay. Now we're talking. Now... Now we're talking because we're gonna have six seconds on Primus Roglic, four on Jack Hague. Okay. The cards are in my hand. I have the entirety or the entirety of this race on my shoulders. But I reckon I reckon we can do well. The plus three of Simone Petit as well could be genuinely a key. Um I'll pace to ensure that the breakaway doesn't win. Okay. We may have a potential draw to win on our hands today. And here's the first important moment of this Dalanda finale. Bauke Molama not only crashes, but withdraws from this race on injury. Okay, alright. Trek Sigafredo is out of the running to win this Dalanda. It is up to every other team now. That's good. That's, that's a good analysis. F follow for more. We're going to go uh, up the Wollongong Hill for the first time today. We still have a breakaway of four riders. Stan de Wulf is the sole man up front. Jonas Ruch, uh, Kevin Jeanette and Ivan Souza are there. Lorenzo Rota is doing quite well here, right next to, uh, to Ide Schelling. We're going to have uh, Simone Petit as well getting back up. Has Guillaume Boivin for uh, Israel Premier Tech. Okay, for now it's Decent, Kroveik is there, Ben Hammond, Michael Woods already trying to, um, to increase his position as we're getting dropped a few times there. Julian Lafilippe has already taken my wheel. Are you good? Julian, I'm not that much of a... Th I mean, I am a threat, but I suppose you're one slightly more than me. I'm trying to uh, put Lorenzo Rota in clean air. Should be able to be done before the, the left-hander. It's going to be quite tough, actually. But we should be able to pull through. Well, Von Aert is there. Simone Petit is immediately going to protect Lorenzo Rota. Lorenzo Hus can take... Sorry, Lorenzo Hus can take the will of Lorenzo. Alright, let's go. We're on the way for the final time on this Wollongong Hill. We have 4 seconds on Jack Haig. 6 seconds on Roglic. And I believe 10 seconds on the rest of the world. As it is the team Yombo Vesma pacing at the front for Krov oh, with Krovak and Tennyson. Mark Hirsch is right here. Sebastian Berwick here on home terrain. Here's Alessandro Corby. Hirsch and Philippe on the right. Michael Woods maybe starting to struggle a bit already. Uh, maybe a bit early for the Canadian, if you ask me. Lorenzo Rota is going to get blocked here by uh, quite a few people. And that's going to carry on, actually. Mark Hirsch is the one blocking me now. That is not good. That is nicht gut, as we would say in German, which has no relevancy here. 
because we're in Australia. But Lorenzo Rota is going to pull through. What a comeback in the final corner. Lorenzo Rota wins at Willing Hill ahead of Primo Roglic, Brad McNulty, Jack Haig, Michael Woods, Laurent Hus. Or Laurent Hus, sorry. <laughs> Mauri Van Sevenant, Simon Petit, Julien Philippe, and Sepkus to wrap up the top 10. It is a second win for Lorenzo Rota, a third for Intermarché, and mainly. It is the general classification of the Santos Tour down under that should be sealed with 90 kilometers left to do around the town of Adelaide. And that result right there, that is why you put your decent riders in good shape at the start of the season, because this is where you can capitalize and get the most points. Uh, sadly, Bernard Berchberg did not make the first cut, but GC was, it is Rota, Roglic, and Simone Velasco, who's holding on to P3 thanks to three breakaways you love to see. 83 kilometers that will feel like a procession for the boys of uh, Intermarché ou Antigobert because we have one jersey to protect but we should be good to go. Uh, I don't see us losing it. I mean, it would need, basically, would need Primo Roglic to win the mass sprint and us to finish quite far down below because we do have very decent aggregate positions already. Uh, Simone Petit with a plus five. Barnabas Park with a plus one. Can we get a fourth win on the uh, Aussie roads? I don't think so, but we can try. We've entered the final five kilometers, or at least we are going to enter the final five. There we go. Petit Zimmerman Piak Rota has been my train all along on uh, the uh, Aussie tour, and I don't believe like it will change for the final five kilometers. We're going to try and uh, not get blocked here, which we will do so rather successfully, actually. Quite nicely done. By, uh, by Simone Petit, he will be finishing uh, in a decent P17 GC wise. Uh, but what a tour he's had, what a tour he's had. So has Barnabas Perak and so has Lorenzo Rota, who may not be fighting for the win today. There will be Nasser Boigny, Wout van Aert, Wout van Aert, Van Papel. Van Papel lifts his arm, but I'm pretty sure that he wins. Wout van Aert has been Thomas Pitcocked on the Amstel Gold Race. It's a W for Boransgrohe ahead of Van Aert and Lorenzo Rota comes home in P3, sealing the general classification of the Zanonda. Quite a successful tour down under. Uh, we win the GC ahead of Roglic and Simone Velasco. Uh, Petit actually lost a position in the final sprint. I'm very sorry about that, brother. Um, that was actually Van Poppel who moves up to P5. Van Poppel managed to finish with everyone on, down under, on the uh, Wellinga Hill. Nice performance. But overall, we've won three stages in the GC for our first world to race this season. Can't really be too sad about that, can I? All right, we're in Spain, not a World's Tour race, uh, but the Trofeo Polenta. For now, I mean, you'll see uh, how the campaign in Spain has gone. Um, it could have been slightly better, I think, on one end. Uh, but we do have the plus three for Biniam Girmay, which gives him 78 in hills on a finish that could suit him. So we'll see how that goes. He'll be held with, uh, with a decent Louis Maintiès. Um, just like on a down under, I'm being struck with severe lack of FPS, and I still don't know why. Um, so hopefully that doesn't hinder me too much. But hopefully we're in for a good race. I think we'll have one more proper race after that. That'll be the K11 Road race. Uh, and then you'll see the race recap of Tropical Mesa Bongo, all the Spanish race, race Tolkai, and Grand Prix de Marseillaise. The peloton is really, really going at it, and um, the the profile and the fact that there's many corners, many ups and downs. You don't really have any any place to like accelerate. Really, really hinders your progression within the peloton. Uh, I've been at the back of the group since I think the summit of the um, of the Col de Puig Mayor, and I've not been able to reach the front of the group, even though I was pacing like 85, 86. Uh, as I say that we do manage to come back and still we're going to get blocked by Matteo Fabro over there as Ineos yet again accelerates through Carlos Rodriguez. Tobias Foss is there. We'll take a quick look at the start list, which I haven't done so already. Uh, but we have the likes of Primo Troglic, Maxi Schachmann, Mihal Kutkowski, Gorka Izaguirre, Pio Bilbao, Rigo Uran, George Bennett. We have some very, very, very good riders uh, and a strong competition for Biniam Germay today. Right, we struggled, uh, we even got dropped with Biniam, um, but we've managed to come back in the first group. We have this slight downhill portion here, I need to be well placed. Again, the frame rate, I can feel it, is going to kill me. But we need to be well positioned. Uh, it's typically the kind of climbs I don't like, the kind of climbs the AI love, uh, because they just do stupid things and it works. 
Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Port Dondrach, let's go. Jonas Vingegaard is there. Everyone is there, actually. As a matter of fact, he's there shedding Tom Dumoulin, Schachmann, Bennett, McNulty, Guillaume Martin, Biniam Girmay, well and truly in the mix. As uh, Jumbo Visma has decided to go through Roglic and Jonas Vingegaard, and we will not be able to see them again. Nice. Lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. I like to the rhythm a bit with Binyam, but I'm nearing the end of my uh, of the yellow. We may be able to pull through maybe for a third place here if we can get Maxi Schachmann. It's a 1-2 for Jumbo Visma. Jonas Vingegaard uh, wins ahead of Primoz Roglic. P3 today will be between Schachmann, Girmay and Richie Port. I think it'll be for the German champion. Yes, it is. Richie Port and Binyam Girmay to complete the top five. Uh, I would have loved to have Blue yes. Helping me out a bit. I've lost a lot of energy trying to just well, pull through and come back. It's a shame. I think the podium could have been there, but I don't think the win was. All right, final race of the episode. Uh, it's a minus four for Christoph. Well, that's brilliant now, isn't it? Uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Final seven kilometers. We're in the final hill of this seagull. Um, Alexander is trying to hold on to the wheel of, um, of Luke Vliegen, Quinn Hermans, and Rein Tarame. Uh, but mostly, interestingly enough, for one of the first times, I think, in my uh, years of playing this race, we have some riders up front. We actually have some riders fighting for the win uh, that isn't due to a sprint. So that is quite spectacular. But Splunkart is going to take the wheel of, um, of Alex Christoph. We're going to go 99 with Luke Vliegen. Kaspar Asgen has stopped pacing at the front, so said breakaway is not going to win. Uh, we're going to get blocked by a rider from Arkea Samzik. A lot of riders are trying to attack. I'm seeing Kronewegen very early on already. Uh, actually, that's in the world of, um, of Michael Matthews, so I guess that's, I guess that's not too bad. Uh, but Christoph is going to try something. He's not going to have the energy to go to the end. Nasser Boigny wins the Seagull ahead of Alexander Christoph. Wo van Aert, Caleb Ewan, Gaviria, Philipson, Nidzelo, Pedersen, Kronewegen, Bats Blancard, and Danny Van Purple. Boigny with the strong start of the season, already went out once in, um, in the Down Under, and he wins now at the K-11s, a great ocean road race. P2 nonetheless for Christophe. I think that's quite cool for us. The minus 4 definitely played a part in us getting second, um, although if we're being realistic, I think even with a 0 or with a plus 1, I don't know if I could have been able to defeat Nasser Boigny, who really sprinted when he needed to, um, had a very nice run through the corners. It's a decent win for uh, the sprint of Arka Samzik. Um, P2 for us. And now, let's move on to the rest of the races. Our season did not start in Australia, but well and truly in Africa, in Gabon to be precise, as the team headed to the Tropical Amisa Vongo for seven days of sprint. Not the strongest of lineups, but you will find uh, the likes of Tom De Vrindt, Dimitri Kleis, and Taco Van Eron making their season debut, the first stage done Andres. Is a bit of an L as Jonas Ricard from Alpecin takes the win. We come in P5 with Dimitri Kleis, but immediately comes the second stage. We are going to avenge ourselves, benefiting from the AI being quite stupid, uh, not able to make a single corner or a hill to take not only our first win of the season, but also our first 1 2 3 with Taco Van raising his hands ahead of Corne van Kessel, Emir de Rennes. Jonas Ricard comes in for plate with Dimitri Kleiss yet again in P5. Meaning that we were tied on a second with, um, with Jonas Ricard heading into stage 3, a bit of a hill to make that climb. Aimé de Rent was our leading sprinter for this stage, one kilometer to go. You can see the train for Olaf Koy on the left and also Jonas Ricard being here. Aimé de Rent is going to try and kick out of the wheel of Taco Van Eron, sadly. Not strong enough, it is yet another win for the Belgian sprinter of Alpes and Phoenix. Bonifacio comes in P2, De Rent in P3. Regarding stage 4, a bit more of a, of a normal sprint, although, again, many corners in the final a few kilometers, which meant that our train struggled despite a plus 4 on Corne van Kessel, then wearing the points jersey. Um, we're going to try and put him in the best possible positions, but we're going to get blocked immediately by the train of UAE here for Alvaro Hudge and for uh, Rui Oliveira, and Rui Oliveira will actually take the stage win in uh, Muila for stage 4. You can see the FPS yet again absolutely dying as the riders stop on the line. It is a 1-2 for UAE, Van Kessel comes in P3 as our best finisher. Moving on to stage 5, and drama happened because just in the final 5 kilometers, 
Half Our Dream, Crash, the likes of Van Kessel, Emme de Rent, Tim De Vrindt, Dimitri Klaes waited for them. But thankfully enough for us, it meant that Julius Johansson and Taco Van Der Horn were clear. And Taco Van Der Horn is going to get a second stage win on this Tropical Amisa Bongo. Not only taking the double, but also taking the leading jersey of the tour. Um, quite a nice performance of P2 for Julius Johansson. Fortunate with the crash. Stage three, very uh, sorry. Stage six, very very um, battled stage with the breakaway having more than ten minutes before the final sprint. It will be uh, quite quite a domination for the leader of um, Boransgro, Martin Lass. Then twenty seconds down on the GC, comes back on Bonifazio and needs the having an absolute stinker of a of a tropical. But Martin Lass remembered the name because he was twenty seconds down. He won the stage. Neither Ricard or I made the podium. He was now ten seconds down. And comes the final stage, Martin Lass is yet again going to take the podium, meaning that mathematically speaking, both Ricard Van Eron and Martin Lass will be in the exact same second with no more stages left. But the winner of the Tropical Amisa Bongo is none other than Taco Van Der Horn, who gets our second GC in two races. Absolutely brilliant as we headed to the Spanish races. Danny Van Poppel was there for Bora, Boy Van Poppel was also here for Intermarché, Binyam Carmel, Gerbert Tyson. Von Purple, that is basically I, uh, or sorry, our sprinting hierarchy. The first sprint, though, is not going to be good enough for us. It's a win for Fabio Jacobson ahead of Bonifazio. The man in the moment, Martin Lass, comes home in P3 as the riders yet again stop. Gerber Tyson will take P4 for us. Very, very decent sprinting composition here. And that will carry on with the next stage, um, with the Trofeo Alcudia, which I believe Binyam Germay has won in real life. We're going to be in a very, very interesting position because with two kilometers to go, Binyam Germay. Boy Van Poppel, René Wegen and Fabio Jacobson are basically the only riders within a shot at winning. And despite a plus three, Boy Van Poppel will fall on a stronger rider in uh, Dylan René Wegen, who takes the win for Bike Exchange, getting his first W with his new team. We headed to stage three. Trofeo, Trofeo Day, I believe. Mencius struggled throughout the day, got dropped not once, not twice, but three times. Still managed to make a comeback in the final kilometer. But it just wasn't meant to be for the uh, South African rider. Giulio Ciccone takes a dominant win at the Trofeo Serra de Tramuntana. P2 for Alessio, uh, sorry, Alessandro Corvi and P3 for Pierre Latour. P4, uh, sorry, P14 for, um, for Louis Maintiès. The stage 4, you've seen it uh, as we've played it with BNM Germay. Stage 5, mass sprint. Again, difficult finishes. Uh, you're going to see Alvaro Hudge completely drop on the left-hand side of the road here. And the win is for Alessandro Corvi, who didn't win the previous stage uh, and does here. Girmay gets P4 as our best finisher of the day. As we left Spain to go to France, many attacks in the Grand Prix de Marseille. Very, very tough race. And we're going to be in the wheel of Brandon McNulty with Lorenzo Rota. Very, very decent position. We could not be in a better position in having a 10-man wide sprint will sadly not be good enough for Lorenzo Rota. It's going to be P3 behind Ide Schelling, who takes the win ahead of Clément Champoussin. Lorenzo in P3, though, for a very, very tough stage. Absolutely thrilled with that result. And we wrap up our transfer, or our race recap, sorry, in Australia for the debut of Alexandre Kostov before the Kedder Vance Road Race, the race tour guy. No competition whatsoever for uh, Christophe on the start list, sadly. No legs as well for the Norwegian sprinter who tries to come back but ba very, very badly positioned at the beginning and it's a win for Rudiger Selig ahead of Ben Swift yet again, the rider stopping on the road, Christoph P3. Quite a successful first episode. If you ask me, um, three stages on the Down Under and the GC. Two stages, I think, on the Tropical Amisa Bongo and a very close GC, but a GC nonetheless. P3, uh, sorry, P2 and K11, one podium and two top fives in, um, in the Spanish races. I think we've done quite well. Um, one thing I'll do at the end of every episode is we'll take a look at the results yet again. Uh, so let's do that right now. So far, so good. We've had uh, seven wins, which is already quite decent. That's like one third of what I actually did last year. Um, quite happy with this. Very, very happy with uh, our first episode. And I hope you guys are also happy to see the career coming back to the channel. I know a lot of you asked for it and I never really delivered. Well, here I am. So, yeah, enjoy it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, though. If you have, then please smash the like button down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this save going forward, then do feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day.